The paper titled, Shear Induced Sponge to Lamellar Transition in Bicontinuous Microemulsions Evidenced by Microfluidic Sands, investigates the effect of shear flow on bicontinuous microemulsions, specifically focusing on the transition from a sponge-like, L3, phase to a lamellar, L, phase. The authors hypothesize that shear flow applied to bicontinuous microemulsions will induce a transition to lamellae by suppressing surfactant monolayer fluctuations. They expect this transition to occur at higher shear rates compared to the L3 phase. To test their hypothesis, the authors perform experiments using a model bicontinuous microemulsion composed of D2O, N-octane, C10E4 and couple microfluidics with small angle neutron scattering, SANS. This setup allows them to attain wall shear rates exceeding 105 S-1 and examine the flow response of the microemulsion. By reducing the probed sample volumes to around 10 nanoliters, they are able to map the structural and orientation changes within the microchannel as a function of the flow field components. The findings of the experiments show that increasing flow rate leads to a gradual increase in scattering anisotropy and a decrease in microemulsion domain size along the main flow orientation. The degree of anisotropy is described by considering the velocity gradient along the scattering plane perpendicular to the flow. The authors discuss the flow dependence of the effective bending rigidity and rationalize the influence of shear on thermal membrane fluctuations. They propose that the bicontinuous to lamellar transition can be attributed to the gradual disappearance of interlamellar passages. The paper also provides information on the phase behavior, viscosity measurements, and small angle neutron scattering techniques used in the study. The authors emphasize the industrial and academic relevance of understanding the influence of shear on the rheology and structural response of bicontinuous microemulsions. In summary, the introduction of the paper presents the hypothesis, experimental setup, and main findings of the study. The authors aim to investigate the shear-induced transition from a sponge-like phase to a lamellar phase in bicontinuous microemulsions and provide evidence for this transition using microfluidic sands techniques. The 2D, 1D, and azimuthal scattering patterns of a non-sheared bicontinuous microemulsion and an aligned lamellar phase are shown. The patterns were recorded at the phase inversion temperature with equal volumes of D2O and N-octane. The figure also includes schematic representations of a bicontinuous microemulsion and a lamellar structure. The hypothesis of a shear-induced transition from the bicontinuous to the lamellar phase at high shear rates is illustrated. The scattering patterns reveal a gradual increase in scattering anisotropy with increasing flow rate. This is accompanied by a decrease in the size of the microemulsion domains along the main flow orientation. The degree of anisotropy was consistently described by considering the velocity gradient along the scattering plane perpendicular to the flow. This indicates that the flow field components have a significant influence on the structural and orientation changes within the microchannel. The phase diagram of the D2O, N-octane, C10E4 system is shown as a function of the membrane volume fraction. The bicontinuous microemulsion and lamellar phase are examined at the phase inversion temperature close to the two-phase coexistence of microemulsion and lamellar phase. The flow curve reveals Newtonian flow behavior for the bicontinuous microemulsion and characteristic shear thinning behavior for the lamellar phase. The microfluidic sand setup is depicted, along with the influence of flow on the microemulsion alignment. The alignment factor AF which quantifies the degree of anisotropy, increases with flow rate at all positions. The hyperbolic shape of the AF profile indicates that the structure evolves from near isotropic at the center to increasingly anisotropic near the walls. The alignment factor AF is found to increase with the velocity gradient, regardless of the transversal channel position, and is strongest at the channel wall. The collapse of all AF data onto a master curve when plotted as a function of the median velocity gradient confirms the alignment of lamellar membranes parallel to the flow direction and normal to the velocity gradient vector. The microfluidic sands measurements at selected positions along the channel transversal direction are shown. The scattering patterns exhibit marked differences as the flow rate increases. The alignment factor at the channel wall increases strongly with flow rate while it only increases to a certain extent at the center. The scattering peak sharpens and shifts towards higher Q values in the main direction, while it moves towards lower Q values and almost vanishes in the perpendicular direction. 
The periodicity and amphiphily city factor show corresponding trends with the flow rate. The scattering profiles obtained from sector analysis of the 2D patterns near the channel wall with increasing flow rate are shown. The scattering peak sharpens and shifts towards higher Q values in the main direction, while the peak in the perpendicular direction moves towards lower Q values and almost vanishes. The periodicity and amphiphily city factor are plotted as a function of the median velocity gradient. The periodicity decreases with increasing flow rate in the main direction and increases in the perpendicular direction. The amphiphily city factor decreases in the main direction and increases in the perpendicular direction with increasing flow rate. The effective bending rigidity and effective fluctuation length scale are shown as a function of the median velocity gradient. The effective bending rigidity decreases systematically in the main direction and increases in the perpendicular direction with increasing shear flow. The effective fluctuation length scale shows a strong influence of shear on the thermal membrane fluctuations compared to the characteristic length scale. The cross-sectional schematic of the microemulsion structure under high shear is depicted. It shows the formation of lamellar-like surfactant membranes connected by interlamellar passages. The length scales obtained from the analysis of the scattering data can be related to the lamellar spacing and the distance between passages indicating the transition from a bicontinuous structure to a lamellar structure. The schematic representation of the flow-induced structure inside the microfluidic channel is shown. It illustrates the evolution from the initial bicontinuous structure at the center towards a lamellar structure at the channel wall. The transition is facilitated by membrane alignment along the flow direction and normal to the velocity gradient vector, as well as the disappearance of interlamellar passages due to flow. In this study, the researchers investigated the effect of shear flow on bicontinuous microemulsions using microfluidic small-angle neutron scattering, SANS. They observed a gradual transition from a sponge-like, L3, structure to a lamellar, L. Structure as the shear rate increased. The degree of anisotropy in the scattering patterns increased with flow rate, indicating the alignment of surfactant monolayers along the flow direction. The transition to a lamellar structure was attributed to the disappearance of interlamellar passages. The researchers also analyzed the bending rigidity of the surfactant monolayers and found that it decreased with increasing shear flow. These findings provide insights into the structural response of bicontinuous microemulsions under shear flow and have implications for the development of new materials and applications in various industries. If you are an author or copyright holder for the work presented in this video and you have any issue with the existence or contents of this video, please let me know.